make America great again. God bless you and goodness, I love you. With Donald Trump in as the 45th president of the United States of America, we can't help but imagine what could have been. Back in 2012, when he first became a presidential hopeful, Trump was actually looking at saving Rangers football club. With the Glasgow Giants facing administration, the flamboyant businessman came sniffing around. But before we can look at why a businessman who's declared bankruptcy six times might have been the one to save Rangers from going under, we need to give you a little bit of backstory. Around the time Rangers started to run into financial woes, Trump was looking to continue building his global golf empire by opening a new golf course north of Aberdeen, citing his strong Scottish roots as a reason to bring business ventures to Scotland. He reportedly told the locals of his mother's birthplace while visiting, I feel very comfortable here, as he handed out copies of his book, How to Get Rich. Trump's Scottish mother, Marianne McLeod, was born and raised in the Isle of Lewis. She emigrated to the United States in May of 1930, departing Glasgow for New York City around the same time Rangers were winning their 18th league title. And feeling those Scottish ties, Trump promised to make Scotland great again through the golf property in Balmedy, pleasing many while outraging others. The site of the course was a 4,000-year-old environmentally protected sand dune, but the 6,000 jobs that Trump promised was more than enough for national officials to overrule local officials and push the project through, despite public outcry to protect the land. The property, which has failed to live up to Trump's lofty expectations, officially opened in 2012. And adding a touch of Trump, he tried to punish those who publicly opposed the course and ordered a 15-foot wall of earth to be built around residents who refused to sell them their property to expand the golf course. Watch out, Mexico, he also sent the residents the bill. So, Trump was spending a wee bit of time dabbling in the Scottish economy, when the possibility of taking over Glasgow's historically Protestant club came to his attention. I brought my Bible. Trump himself claims to be a Presbyterian, part of the reformed tradition within Protestantism, which traces its roots back to the British Isles. He grew up attending Marble Collegiate Church, which is one of the oldest Protestant congregations in America. Pastors from Marble Collegiate even performed ceremonies for Trump's first and second marriages. And Trump had actually owned a sports franchise in the past as well. In 1984-1985, Trump owned the New Jersey Generals, a team in the short-lived United States Football League. The USFL was a springtime alternative to the NFL, but when Trump took over, he wanted the league to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a more powerful NFL, and he made major power plays that reverberated throughout the USFL and beyond, ultimately resulting in the league folding unceremoniously with many fingers pointed at Trump. A second chance to get his tiny hands on a football team, this time a proper one, arose during his time investing in those Scottish business ventures, with Rangers lifting their kilt to woo Trump. And Trump may actually know something about the game. Having played varsity high school soccer, and once upon a time, he even did the 1992 draw for the English League Cup from Trump Tower. Oh, Donald, you don't realize what you've done there. As for Rangers, Trump and his associates looked over what was happening at the Glasgow site in detail. But ultimately, the financials were so dire that even Trump couldn't make a deal to buy the historic club. A source close to Trump reportedly said, we looked seriously and walked away. It just didn't make sense to us. Although, they are a great club. We hope someone steps in and builds the team again. But Rangers wouldn't be the only football club that Trump expressed interest in. In 2015, after making controversial statements about Latin American immigrants on the campaign trail, Trump was apparently part of a potential $100 million bid for Colombian giants Atletico Nacional, the Medellin club famously backed by drug kingpin Pablo Escobar in the 1980s. What a confusing world we live in. So, who knows what could have happened had Trump decided to take over Rangers or Nacional? Could Trump have made the clubs huge? Would he be in the White House today? Well, we'll never really know.